Kyle Manzardo didn't exactly have a major league debut to write home about. Then again, the Guardians won, so maybe he will, and he got to witness the greatness that is Jose Ramirez. Kyle Manzardo will have plenty of chances that we learned that Stephen Kwan is going to be out for a month. How did the Guardians survive that month without their dynamic leadoff hitter? We'll get into that today. And, of course, some fun MLB draft talk. It is time for Lockdown Guardians. You are Locked On Guardians, your daily podcast on the Cleveland Guardians. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone. I well, don't, don't know what's going on with my voice there. Uh, and welcome to the show today. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest, most exciting way to play daily sports fantasy. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on MLB. Use the code all lowercase locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. If you picked Kyle Manzardo's strikeouts in Prize Picks today, you might have done well. Is that too too soon? He'll rebound. He'll be fine. I was I was joking with Justin. Uh, I, th- I feel like. 60% of our texts during the games are us doing like joking hot takes that we feel like we might get exposed to. Like, <laughs> we'll never make it. Manzardo's a bust. Send him down. Uh, <laughs> after Bazana went deep again today and just smoked the heck out of one, that guy has below average power. Like, that's all. It's just our, our text chain is just a bunch of bad takes to each other that we have. Uh, we and so, before we get on the air, so this yeah. show is not filled. With all. Just, we already have enough bad takes to make it here. We need to no, uh, get the, the rest of them out. The best part though is when one of us, like today, I didn't realize what just Justin was doing. He had that so, sometimes you know we're we're being you know honest about things, and then we we dive into that, and he's like, no, no, I'm doing the take. I'm, oh, I'm sorry, I was I was behind. I'm doing a bet. Um, I'm doing the bet. I missed the bet. But uh, what was not a bet is hey, this team won again today. Um, Jose Ramirez, you you had. Good. You had kind of the stat of the day for me um, about his how many pitches he chased today, because that has been his biggest issue this year is pitches out of the zone. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't too many today. I think he in the, in the bat and the at bat, he hit the home run off of Jack Flaherty, which Jack Flaherty was a good matchup for Jose because he's a very heavy fastball pitcher. And we have talked about how Jose really needs to see more fastballs to to get out of this and, and really what you the only way to get fastballs is to earn them. But uh, his first couple of bats didn't do any damage, but he didn't strike out. He didn't chase out of the zone. And then he had a seven pitch at bat. And, you know, apparently the longer in a bat goes with Jose Ramirez, the worse it is for a pitcher. I'd imagine that's true for anybody, but Jose Ramirez is just otherworldly when you get deep into bats. And the only pitch he really swung in out of the zone was a fastball um, on a, on the uh, two, two count. And he fouled it off. It was, you know, a couple a little a couple inches out of the zone. It wasn't crazy. And then finally, Flaherty made a mistake up and in, and, and Jose pulled it down the line, had just enough on it. But yeah, he saw a bunch of fastballs. He saw a couple of uh knuckle curves in that bat. He saw one changeup that wasn't even close to a strike, so you didn't have to worry about that. But the knuckle curves were both strikes. He did not chase them. Um, or the one he fouled off, which was in the zone. The second one was a was a called strike he just took, which you know, good because that's not a pitch you're going to do anything with because he wasn't going to be able to hit that ball. Um, it was a good pitch by Flaherty. So he stayed in the at-bat. That was good and saved the day. This is That's what they need from, from, from Jose Ramirez right now is without Quan and, and other guys really hitting right now is you need Jose Ramirez to step up and become Jose Ramirez. It was only a one-for-four performance, but it was just enough on Monday to get a win over a Tigers team that pitches very well. And we said yesterday that there's a good chance these these series, these games with, with Detroit can be very low scoring. So it's going to take a couple swings to pull it out. And it did. And they're going to need a lot more hits than that. But, you know, you got Kenta Maeda coming and you got three souls. News been pretty good. They, they've hit Kenta Maeda previously, I feel like. So the thing with Flaherty is like he just doesn't walk a lot of guys. So you've got a pitcher who doesn't walk dudes and you got a team that doesn't walk. That's a either a good thing because that means – the team is going to swing at strikes or you're not going to walk and you're not going to have traffic on base. If the guy is great, like that's what happened against Tanner Houck, right? So this is the the reverse of that because Tristan McKenzie pitched well, but Jose with just enough offense to win the game. And they're going to need more of, of that from Jose going forward, at least for the next month. Yeah. I mean, this team, they, they, I mean, for the whole year, they need Jose to be Jose. I have no idea what's going on here with my cat. It's, this is going to be an interesting show, uh, audio-wise. Full moon. With that apology. 
I, is that the case? I, I don't know. Uh, but I don't know. I'm guessing. Oh, just sit here and do some some uh, some lifts. And yeah, curls. Just do some curls. Uh, yeah, I mean, they need a version of Jose yeah, that is going to work. You know, for the whole season, they need him again. I, I'm not expecting him to be. You know the MVP Jose. I, I don't know if we're going to get that guy back because we've seen the um, the decline. Well, how do I phrase this correctly? We've seen the increase in chase rate, which is a decline in his overall hitter profile. I, I don't know if we're going to quite get back, but like I still think he can be like a six win player, and they need him to be that guy, as opposed to you know until recently where he's a blow slightly, but a blow league average hitter. And that's he still is. It's 98, 98 overall uh, WRC plus. So he's still you look at the last probably two weeks. It it might be a little higher. You know, I don't know. Maybe I'm displacing too much. uh, Yeah. In terms of like some recent big hits, but they, they got to get him because let's be honest, this is not a lineup built um, with a lot of replacement guys. I mean, even, even the Rokios and the Freemans and the young guys aren't, aren't really, league average they're below league average so you need you need the jose's you need jose and you need both nailers and um yeah, you do. need jimenez to bounce back and you need Quan to be healthy because that gives you five solid hitters and the rest is roll the dice and, and hope so all of those guys just have oversized value because of how little there is around them yeah the and jose helps the rest of the lineup too i mean we talked to you yesterday again he's got to earn more fastballs luckily he faced flaherty who is a fastball heavy pitcher, so that really helped work in his favor. But the fact is, he didn't go fishing for a lot of other stuff. He knew that Flaherty was going to throw fastball, so he waited him out. And that's again, you have to earn the fastball. So if you have uh, the, the way I think Jose gets back, I'm repeating myself for money, but the way I think Jose gets back to being Jose, and again, I'm not saying you know MVP level because that's a little unrealistic, and that'd be great, but I don't think any of us are expecting that. But the way he gets back to being a guy who is, you know, one of the, I don't know, 20 best hitters in baseball, whatever you want to call it, is he's got to earn those fastballs in the zone. So he's got to do what he did against Jack Flaherty is where he saw the spin. He he laid off of it. He fouled it off when he could, and he waited for the fastball to come to him, and he got it. And that's what he's going to have to do to jump out of the slump, and that's what he did for the home run. And that's going to help the rest of the order, too, because you've – Got Josh Naylor, who's kind of hit a valley because he doesn't walk a lot. Although I think he had a walk in this one, if I'm not mistaken. He did not. Yeah, he had one walk, so that's good. Um, you know, a little return in patience to Josh Naylor would help. But if Jose takes his walks, especially ahead of Josh Naylor, you know, in addition to the power, they're going to need Jose to supply the power. They absolutely need that. But if Jose can take his walks, if he knows he's just going to get spin, if he doesn't get that fastball he's looking for, um, a runner on base for Josh Naylor changes things, right? Because um, otherwise you can just go ahead and pitch around Josh Naylor and say, okay, well, Brennan beat you or uh, David Fry or Tyler Freeman, any of those guys, Bo Naylor beat me, you know, like you're going to want to face any of those guys. You don't want to get beat by Jose or Josh Naylor. But if you put a runner on for Josh Naylor, it makes it less likely he's going to face junk and get pitched around too. And hopefully less likely that he's going to chase that junk, right? Like I think that, that changes the middle of the order a little bit, even though I still would not hate seeing Jose lead off. Um, you know, Florial did a decent job on, on, two, on Monday with his first assignment or second assignment, I should say. But yeah, if Jose can can up the walk rate, and I'm not saying he needs to turn to a three a three true outcome hitter because he's not striking out a lot, but he just has to you know get on base a little more, and that should help the rest of the order. You you do have to trust the other guys that are going to come through, which is a little bit of a risk, but it's better to be on base than not, right? Like the pitcher gets pitcher wins if he's facing Josh Nana with nobody on, right? Or Jose for that matter. Yeah. No, agreed. It's just the importance of both of them. And just go back to when, you know, Naylor was being an absolute beast and the other going and Jose had a little bit more consistency and this team was averaging like six runs a game. Like in the the shift we have seen, and it's just going to be for a lot of guys got to step up, and that's um, especially with the news that Kwani is out for four weeks, which we'll we'll get into. And yeah. this team has not won a lot of low scoring games either. I will say a lot no. of their games they're winning need they've four scored runs. runs and 
yeah, they've scored runs and spread the score out a little bit, or they've they've had blowouts, or they've scored a lot of runs. Like, you know, we're looking at a lot of like they have an 8 0 win back in Seattle. You've got 8 7 over the Yankees, 10 7 over the Red Sox, 10 2 over Oakland. Um, this is, I think this is the first game all year where they've won a game scoring less than three runs. If I'm not mistaken, they lost in Oakland scoring three on a walk off, and then they scored three against Minnesota on the sixth of April for a win. And then after that, yeah, they haven't scored. This is the first time they've won all year scoring less than three runs, second time all year. So that's a good sign maybe for the starting pitching, which we have to talk about as well coming up here. Um, we'll talk about that and what the Guardians are going to need to do to survive this month without Stephen Kwan. And we'll finish up with uh, a lot of college baseball talk, a lot of draft talk we've got to get into today since we didn't get to it on Monday's episode. So look forward to all of that coming up. And let's talk – at least at the start here about our good friends over at prize picks. It's what I always say. It's you versus the numbers at prize picks. It's not you versus me. It's not you versus Justin. It is just you versus the numbers. So if I go over and look at today's board over on prize picks and it's super busy right now, so it's running a little slower and, you know, I can go through and see Josh Bell hitter score more or less versus the Dodgers of six. I'm going to take less than that one, for instance. Um, <laughs> Old friend Josh Bell. You know, uh, yeah, Otani, hitter score of nine or, or more against Miami. I see that's that's the ones you avoid. You don't want to go for the high end. You want to look for those. Dan's Wisconsin 6.5 versus San Diego. That looks pretty good to me. Like, that's uh, Willie Adames, 6.5 versus Kansas City. I like that. Adames has been driving the first place Brewers this year. So go check out Prize Picks for yourself. Um, remember, when you go there to use the promo code, Locked on MLB, download the app, or go to the website for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, download the app and or go to the website and use the promo code Locked on MLB, all lowercase, all one word, for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Let's talk about the classic that is Monopoly and the fun spinoff that is Monopoly Go. Let's pause here. And you're going to say, we already talked about a bunch of the stuff. There's so much good stuff in Monopoly Go. Jeff and I, I we love the different emojis. We love taunting when you're knocking over somebody else's um, buildings or other other plots of land they're building on. I love uh, the, the match games that, are, that you can do to heist someone's vault is a lot of fun. And quite frankly, they're very easy. I go through and... Uh, the matching is, is, is a pretty easy game to unlock uh, someone else's vault and take some money from them. So Monopoly is the game you want to build up your riches and, and uh, talk smack to your friends. That's what we all love to do when we're playing games, if we're all being honest. But you can also team up with your friends for time tournaments and work together to build up each other's boards if you're more interested in that kind of co-op sort of thing. And the more you win together, the more prizes you unlock. You can just continue to build that up and earn more rolls, too, without having to, to put a lot into it. So uh, yep. Cool new I pieces, and then chubby cheeks. That's my newest icon since I took first in all my right, contest. Yeah, kind of looks like a capybara. I've got to get back in, and I've got to get some more rolls going. I'm um, slacking on my my building properties and going through and uh, taking some money from people. So Monopoly Go, it feels new and exciting every day with constantly changing tournaments and mini games are always new. Timed events help you win big, like massive multipliers for everything you win. Or rent frenzies. Always something fun to discover in Monopoly Go. So go get off the bench and go download it now, now in the free Google Play or App Store. Monopoly Go. Game on. Game on for the Guardians and the Tigers in Game 2 on Tuesday. Maybe. Weather depending. Who knows? Uh, you can definitely take your chance to listen to that game on your SiriusXM app. Just search Guardians. Uh, not a great debut for Kyle Manzardo, unfortunately, on Monday. I'm sure he'll probably want to flush this one out of his mind. The first pitch he took from down Jack Flurry was a 90s, yeah, down the middle fastball. After that, it all kind of went downhill for him. He saw, you know, a good amount of strikes. It wasn't as if, you know, they weren't pitching to him. Joey Wentz came in and he had a tough at bat again. Those are now strikes, I should say. So he, he did chase two balls, in, uh, below the zone against Joey Wentz, the lefty. So that was one of the things that, we talked about going in, is facing lefties. I mean, 
I think it's smart that they didn't pinch it for him because you know you might as well yeah, let, let him get, get reps, the experience. Yeah, but just the things we talked about, some of the struggles. Jack Flaherty pitched him tough, a lot of off speed, didn't get a lot of fastballs. Um, you know, he he saw the first pitch fastball in his first at bat, but his second at bat, he saw exactly one fastball and he saw a couple knuckle curves and a slider. The slider he just swung and missed that in the zone too. So going to have to get used to some of these pitchers. And that's why we say there's a huge, I mean, it's, it's your first game. So, you know, not to over necessarily over analyze a guy's first game, but uh, that's, you know, the difference between major league pitching and, and triple A pitching. There are no Jack Flaherty's who, you know, even though he's got a four ERA coming in uh, has like had like 50 something strikeouts and five walks in a, a pretty good year so far for the Tigers. So you don't see a lot of that triple A. will take some time to get in. I would imagine we'll be right back in the lineup Tuesday and Wednesday because the Tigers are not throwing Tariq Skubal in this this series, yeah. so you might as well get him out there and continue to get those reps. I did see, I don't know if you saw this on Twitter, there was a report saying that Vote, I didn't I didn't listen to the audio on this, but that Vote said that he was going to work in the outfield, like get some, not necessarily in the game, but on the side, he was going to work in the outfield. That would be very surprising to me. Like, they can say that, but until it actually happens, I'll be surprised. Like, I know people are like, well, why not? They put Gabby Arias in center field and they put Tyler Freeman and David Fry out there. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't see it with man. A little bit more athleticism. Yeah, it's, it's not great athleticism there. I mean, there's yeah, points of talk of like maybe left field. But um, here's the thing. Uh, and we're going to run into this when we talk about college is that a lot of first basemen uh, get the, hey, first base outfield. And like, you know, hey, it it probably I think will work out for Condon. But we've seen like so many Evan Whites. We've seen, you know, Matt Laporta was the first baseman outfielder. Uh, we I'm trying to think of all the recent guys. You know, Torkelson was someone who had that. Uh, <laughs> uh andrew, andrew vaughn. vaughn like <laughs> gavin like sheets, gavin sheets. It, it, it's one of those things it's, it's not set up bad and you know i think nick kurtz is a first baseman all the way i think he's you know a good prospect but uh i i think if you are already a first baseman in college that kind of speaks volumes like mm -hmm. the best player typically plays up the middle like in high school you could be the worst or just the corner and you, period and you might play like shortstop if you're still the best player on the team like that's just the way of it. And it's always been the way of it. And I think that, uh, yeah, if you are a first baseman in college, you are there because you, your college coach viewed it as you couldn't handle a position other than that. Yeah. If you're playing first base specifically, that's yeah. probably what it is. I mean, some colleges also just don't have any reason to move them because if you're trying to win, like the kind of thing is, is pretty rare. They've let him play all over the place. Yeah, uh, which is good. I mean, good on Georgia and good for Condon for doing that because a lot of colleges won't do that because they have more incentive to win instead of helping guys develop for the next level. That's why some colleges just get a terrible rep for that. But yeah, I'll be surprised to see Manzard on the outfield. Maybe they'll they'll give it a shot just to see what happens. But uh, they have enough outfielders to work through as it is. I don't really see you know you're going to be able to move Florial to left field and he that's where he played on Monday and. Brennan and you'll see more Loriano. Like by the time Quan comes back, they should not have any questions, right? About who they need to get answers from, right? You should be able to figure out by the time Quan comes back, okay, Floriel is not part of the future, or he is, or Loriano, it's time to go, or Will Brennan, this isn't it, you know, whatever it is. I'm not saying it's not it for Will Brennan, because I know some commenter will attack me for that. I still like Will Brennan, but by the time Quan comes back next month, I think you should have enough answers because playing time is now open for a lot of these guys and the reason they will be there that's why you can put manzardo with dh in first base and not have to necessarily worry and not no. muddle this all anymore yeah <laughs> this is a chance to figure out what you got with multiple guys and i hope they do that and hopefully we'll have a better idea uh, you know, like we'll see if Brendan can be consistent. We'll see if Florial is going to deserve, you know, a full year, or maybe we end up seeing if George Valera um, gets an opportunity. Gets a shot, right? Yeah. How about Tristan McKenzie? He, you know, got ambushed by the on uh, by Riley Green with that fastball. Who, you know, Riley Green is essentially the Tigers' best hitter in a lineup of guys who just really aren't hitting. Like Han has been good, and Veerling and uh, Carpenter has been solid, but. You know, their best hitter after that has been Wenzel Perez, who's only been up for like 13 games. It's a pretty bad lineup. Um, so Green ambushed him with the fastball, but he responded pretty well and pitched very well after that. 
That's two good starts in a row for McKenzie now. I mean, his last three, four starts, actually. You know, he gave up one run against Oakland in five innings. He gave up two against Boston in four, which, you know, four innings, okay. Um, they pulled him before things got a little murky. And then, you know, he went seven against the Astros, giving up two runs, which was pretty good. And then on Monday, six innings with one run. That's a nice little stretch for McKenzie there. And believe it or not, um, his he's given up, what, fifth? Uh, one, he gave what, one run against the Tigers tonight. So yeah, he's given up 13. Yeah, so he's going to 13 earned runs this year um, overall. And 11 of, I'm sorry, nine of those came in two starts. Nine of those came against the Mariners. The four of them, four came against the Mariners and five against the Yankees. So nine of his 13 earned runs came in two starts. What's your, uh, what's your confidence meter at on Tristan McKenzie right now, Jeff? You feeling like, th- you have to feel like things are going in a better direction than they were yeah. after the, uh, there's what, still Yankee the walks. Start. That you know, uh, are we'd like to see those get down? That, that's always only two. Oh, I was three, there was three tonight. Three. Yeah, it was kind of yeah. rough. You're right, there was three. Um, so I'd like to see that still go down. Listen, I was at a solid a few weeks ago, a, a you know, uh, like an eight or nine concern in a one two confidence. So I'm I'm five now. I'm just gonna say middle of the pack. I'm not like going beyond that, but I, I'm starting to feel better about maybe he's rounding not into shape, but like getting off the rust. I mean, he pitched like less did even hit double digit innings last year like he did not no. get you know he, it's it's a the lot he starts. missed he missed a lot of time he did not get the reps he needed and it's going to take him some time to get things back so to me i'm kind of looking at it that way that i kind of see a guy who you know if we want to look at this in a positive light it's like sometimes things take longer and he is starting to have it come now yeah, he had a couple of uh, I- issues locating the off-speed stuff early on. Fastball command was good pretty much all night. It was up to 91, which 93. So the fastball velocity's kind of found its its floor, I guess, for him a little bit. We'll see how that carries through. But he's found something that works for him, which is you know fastball up in the zone, curveball down. If he can command the secondaries, um, everything starts with him with fastball command. For a lot of guys, it does, but. Um, when he can do that, he can be a very effective pitcher. You know, a couple of that with Ben Lively being good. And I know Tanner's last start, he got a little bit unlucky. And <laughs> I heard he threw a, a fastball to Mickey Moniak where Ma- Mickey Moniak normally struggles. And he got beat, you know, some sequencing stuff. Hopefully he'll bounce back. But Lively's been good. Five, you'll be fine. I, Logan Allen's had a couple of good starts now. And, um, you know, Carrasco had the one good start now against the Angels. We'll see where that goes. But the rotation, you know, is starting to find a little bit of footing here, which they're, you know, obviously going to need uh, without Stephen Kwan. So we'll talk about what the Guardians have to do with to survive without Stephen Kwan. And we will finally get into all of our MLB draft talk here as we end Tuesday's episode of Lockdown Guardians. Stick with us. Getting very close to Mother's Day here. Actually, it's this coming Sunday. Have... You figured out what to get mom yet? Have you figured out what to get your wife or the mother of your children? Whoever put that order um, in today, myself. Yeah, get, <laughs> I hope yeah. There you go. Make sure you're getting that done. Don't, uh, yeah, don't be the last second uh, person running to the convenience store or the grocery store and looking around at cards and flowers and figuring out what the heck am I gonna do? Get fifty percent off your next order, up to fifteen when you spend fifteen on your next flower convenience grocery or retail order now be a great uh kid uh father husband all that good stuff um get get you know use doordash to find whatever mom is into whether it's uh sweets maybe she likes tech stuff uh maybe she's into gardening uh maybe she likes to read all that kind of stuff you can find all that good stuff on doordash get her a coffee anything anything thoughtful that she is going to like uh get all your mother's day gifts in one place and get 50% off that order on DoorDash when you spend 15 or more on your next flower, convenience, grocery, or retail order. Now with our code, locked in MLB. That's locked in MLB. Order using DoorDash today. Term supply. And don't wait to put the Guardians game on Tuesday and listen to it on your SiriusXM app. Search Guardians in time for that first pitch. Uh, Jeff, real quickly before we get into college baseball to wrap up Tuesday's episode, specifically, what do you think the Guardians are going to have to do to survive this month without Stephen Kwan? Because 
early in the year, this was an offense that was pretty solid. You know, everybody was kind of hitting on all cylinders. That is not the case anymore. They are roughly middle of the pack offensively. They're 105 WRC plus as of now. Um, actually, I think that might have gone down after two Monday night. Let's see where they're at now. No, they're still 105 as of Monday night, Tuesday morning. But uh, obviously, you don't have your guy who that drives the engine. Funny to say that Stephen Kwan really is your engine driver of the offense now. It's not necessarily Jose Ramirez. Obviously, we talked about the one thing that has to happen for them to survive is Jose Ramirez. But um, the thing I'm looking at specifically is this, is you can't change guys' hitting profiles. It's hard to do, especially at this stage of their careers when they're already in the majors and you have a couple guys that are not necessarily rookies anymore. But um, to me, they need Bo Naylor to work the walks again. He needs to start being patient or just slugging. Um, Kyle Manzardo has been good at working walks in the minors. They're going to need that from him. Jose's got to get back to working walks. Estevan Florial can work walks too. They need a couple of these guys to be patient and they need to start filling up the base pass in order to create traffic without Stephen Kwan. Like, I hate to say it's the money ball strategy of making every everything up in the aggregate, but it kind of is. Like, everyone's going to have to do something here. It's not going to be one guy, even though we know Jose and Josh have to carry the heavy lifting. No, 100%. It's, it's, uh, I think Bo is really the X factor because you and I both thought he was going to be their third best hitter. And it's not good offensively or defensively right now. Um, there's just a lot of issues going on with him. And, and that could be almost a full show. Sometimes. He's, when, he's above league average. He is. Out right yeah. Now. yeah. But um, yeah, you know, he could almost be a show unto himself, but that I really feel like getting Bo Naylor, straightened out Settled and in. listen he started slow a year ago and and turned it on so maybe he'll do it again this year but that's that's what's gonna maybe more than anything else end up determining this season yeah i i i like floriel's approach in the leadoff spot on tuesday on monday again we'll see what how that goes there's going to be strikeouts he had the double uh the base running too let's talk about the base running very quickly before oh we finish goodness. up with college it's baseball bad the base running has to get better there's just so many instances of guys getting thrown out at second, getting caught stealing and recklessly taking third base and, and trying to stretch singles and doubles. This team has to be a smarter base running team. Someone tell That's Josh they, Naylor they he is slow. Before. Can someone please mm-hmm. tell Josh Naylor he is fifth percentile and he runs like he's 95th percentile. It's like, stop it, Josh. Just stop. He has a negative run value right now. Like, he is maybe the worst offender. It's like, it's like tell Andres to, he hasn't slid head first into first base in a while so maybe someone finally sat him down and had that talk with him someone needs to be yeah, don't josh, say it. he might hear you you're slow <laughs> josh yeah. you are slow um like stop it the guardians are negative 2.3 in fangraphs bsr stat which is based and running, no, running and then in the past average. they've been like say what you want to say about near tito the top near the top he maximized that they need to get back to that very badly that's yeah. what's going to have to happen it's sloppy. Quan, without Quan. they're going to have to be a little more sound without him all right College baseball over the weekend. Things are getting weird. Like they've been it's weird. Been but... weird. I mean, this this season almost like like there are at least ten like team records that have been broken this year. Like this year almost shouldn't count for statistics. It's that bad. It's rough. The history, you know, everyone's gonna get the people who like Charlie Condon are gonna get mad. I mean, let me preface this by saying, if the Guardians take Condon or Bazan, and either you or I will be upset because I think they're no. both good picks. And they'll have more data than us to be made. Yes. I don't think there's a a wrong pick to be made here. I really don't. Both players, I think are going to have good careers, but the history you take one of those two. Well, yeah, that's, that's the the thing here. The history of guys who've hit four or 40 home runs in college though, is not Not pretty. Like Charlie Condon's going to hit 40 home runs. There's no doubt about it. Now he's at 33 and he's only had 47 games so far. There's a lot of college baseball left. He and Cavillia had 48. He's the record holder. He had a mixed career. He had power, but I think great. Yeah. Jeff Ledbetter was a nobody. Lance Berkman had a great career. He was a switch hitter. Brandon Larson. I'm sure not a lot of people know who he is, but he flamed out pretty quickly. With the Reds. And then that's right? it. Uh, I thought it was the Yankees, but yeah, could be, you could be right. Um, and then there's Charlie Conlon, who's going to probably hit 40 this year. So hitting 40 home runs in college doesn't guarantee a whole heck of a lot. But I will say this. You always evaluate the individual. There is historical things you can look for, markers, but you always evaluate the individual. But just saying 40 home runs doesn't guarantee anything. 
all the time. No. Travis Bazana is at 26 home runs and uh, stop telling people, people need to stop saying that Travis Bazana doesn't have power. Like does Charlie Condon have more raw power? Sure. Yes. hundred percent. Travis, Travis Bazana is going to be, I think a 25 home run hitter in the majors. I do. That's plenty of power for wherever he's going to wind up playing, whether it's second base or the outfield. At the two home runs he hit Monday night. Now, again, not facing the best pitching with Gonzaga, but like Oof. he goes both fields. And that second one, I mean, he he hit that about as well. It was a blast. He hit a home run this year. Yeah. It was an absolute bla- um, blast in terms of hits. We have not, we're not going to have a lot of time to talk about the college baseball stuff we wanted to, but I know no. you want to hit on some Arizona stuff and Clark Candiotti. Well, you know, it's just fun. Yes. Son of Tom. Uh, he's maybe a senior sign guy, may not even be that. Uh, Arizona is going to be fun in two weeks when Oregon Oregon plays them because Arizona State. has the yeah 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 when Oregon State plays them sorry they they have the three best pitchers by ERA they have a brand new pitching coach all three guys have great K rates and good walk rate data which is shocking because Arizona is a terrible place to pitch so mm-hmm. um I'm blanking on Jackson's last name or is his last name Jackson Kent. Jackson, Jackson Kent. Kent probably the best draft prospect of the group probably a reliever but he's he's the one to check out but they're all fun and i thought i'd say hey clark candiotti i know people like the sons of guys so there's that i i have a whole list of like guys i want to talk about up here but those will have to be another day do we know if clark throws a knuckleball <laughs> i don't believe he did i'm not sure i'm not gonna get myself in trouble by saying one thing or another i didn't see it mentioned when i looked at his profile and i feel like that would be something that they would say right away yeah we can, if the Guardians are rained out on Tuesday, we can open it up for a mailbag and we can talk a lot more draft. But I'll just say off the top of my head, I think that we've been talking about this off air, but I think the day two pitching, college pitching class is interesting. There's not a lot of high end arms in this class. Like after after Brody Brecht, it's pretty ugly. Um, and then I think it picks back up around round three or five where college pitchers get interesting. We could talk about a bunch of them. I, I, I don't know where Luke Holman fits. He struck out 10 versus Texas A&M over the weekend. A tough that's team. a beast of a lineup. Yeah, that's a good lineup, and it's a tough ballpark to pitch in. He didn't have a great line overall, but he, you know, when you strike out 10 guys in that lineup, you're doing something right, and I still like him. He might be a a, a day one arm still. Um, he might be in that I range. Think so. but. 100 percent yeah I, I would that. imagine so it's not a it's not like a, a sexy profile but it's still pretty good um and there's a couple other guys as well i mean i wanted to talk about aiden may we're not gonna have time today yeah. marcus morgan Mike is still Burke. fascinating you know walk sam so uh right sam and to kachi was someone i had pulled up here rj sales let's think just some fun guys further down the board who are performing really well yeah. or, or jumped out to me statistically but uh, we'll have to talk about Mike Sirota falling into round two, possibly. We yeah, want to talk about a couple of everyone's hitting been asked about northeastern outside of Sirota. He's, he's got a lot of high weird. performing hitters, but I'm not going to be mad if they end up with him in, in day in, in round two. If they end up with him in the third with their 36 pick, I would not be nope. upset about that. Um, if this game gets played, the forecast as of right now looks kind of iffy, but if it gets played Tuesday, we've got uh. Logan Allen and Kenta Maeda should be an interesting match. Guardians have hit Maeda in the past, but again, that doesn't necessarily mean anybody on this team. And Logan Allen, I expect another, I expect another low scoring effort, to be honest with you, if they play this game. Yep. Uh, we want to thank you all for joining us, rating and reviewing, downloading it. Helps. Shout out to Everydayer Kevin Lopez. Uh, thank you for being an Everydayer. Win, lose, or, well, win or lose, that's all that happens. Thank you again, and go, go, <laughs> Guardians, go.